Welcome to The Ride, Life, Work, and Wealth Podcast with your host, Chris DeRoe. Years ago, Chris was a firefighter and a paramedic and witnessed many people not getting another tomorrow, and it shaped who he is now as a financial strategist. Chris doesn't just help people plan for a secure tomorrow, he helps them plan for a better today. Chris lives and works in Burlington, Ontario, and runs an advisory practice named Three Hats Financial. Let's get to it. Welcome to The Ride Podcast with Chris Duro of Three Hats Financial. Creating your financial lifeline, that's the focus this episode. And Chris, that sounds like a great idea, very reasonable concept, but what is a financial lifeline? Yeah, Patricia, what it is, is it's, a, it's actually an exercise that we do for our clients. Usually, like in the three hats, it's the third hat, so the third part of the process. And what that is, is it is a very interactive exercise that we go through mapping out basically a client's life and the transitions that they'll be going through. Transitions can be a number of things, unexpected, expected, but we all know one thing for sure is that we are definitely going to all go through multiple financial transition transitions throughout our life. Now you say multiple, but like how many transitions, like five, six, or are they just going to build up over time? No, actually there, there was a study done because some people may think it's only a few, like some people, everyone can rhyme them off college, buy a house, marry, mm. divorce, all that stuff. But actually there was a study done and it came out to just over 60 and, and from cradle to grave in someone's lifetime. 60. That's, that's yeah. a lot more than I would have expected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which means they got to be addressed and, and, and talked about because each one of those transitions is going to have a certain pathway to those transitions. So you want to have those discussions and kind of map that out. And by having that financial lifeline, that's really what it does is it just gives you an idea of kind of things that may come up or that you know will come up and maps them out on a lifeline from now till death. And it just opens up the discussion because most people, well, I've never had a client where I've sat down and gone through, they're like, oh yeah, I've done this before, or, or we've done something similar. Mm -hmm. How many categories can you break these into? There's a few. The thing is I have different templates, right? Like, so I have a different financial lifeline for retiree compared to a young family. And usually what we do is we, of course we have the, if it's, it's a married couple or common law couple, there's obviously different age differences and stuff too. So we have both of them right on the screen and we just go through the different categories such as family, health, retirement, work, all that type. There's just multiple categories depending on the life stage the person's at. Okay. Well, how early on would, would somebody be smart in starting this? I mean, when do you, when do you get these first big transitions? Well, they can, st I guess the, <laughs> I guess the first big transition would be birth. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> but I don't see that, that that's going to be happening anytime soon, but who knows with how quick these kids now can use iPods and iPads. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Um, Really, it starts to, it starts, the majority of transitions are going to be the later half of the life, which I mean, like after age 20 type thing, university, college, that's where things start to really pick up such as, okay, college, student, a student debt, buying a home, career, married, kids, aging parents, possible inheritance, uh, all this stuff, starting a retirement plan. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it, it's, it's just, it's unlimited. Like there's, there's, and then those are the ones we can think of. There's also going to be unexpected ones, which you can't necessarily put on a lifeline because they're completely unexpected, but then you can still put them on our lifeline and it opens up the conversation. And then we, we spend time going through the pathway to that to try and plan ahead as much as we can for the unexpected ones. But the thing is with transitions is for a lot of people, it's almost like a deer in the headlights. And yeah. what I mean by that is a lot of people know that, oh, this is coming up or I'm going to have to deal with this. And it's like they just kind of don't want to. The inner child of them comes in that they just don't want to have to deal with it and procrastinate, procrastinate, and procrastinate. And then bang, it's on their doorstep and they haven't really put any plan or discussion in place for this. Now, you've got a great line here. It's better to prepare than repair. Now you're talking, okay, some people get into this and they do this, but this is anxiety causing, I would think, for some people if they've never even thought about this. Can you catch up? 
Yeah. So that, actually that line I got from a friend of mine, Mitch Anthony, who's a author and speaker, he uses that. So I, that's where I, I originally got that. And the first time I heard that from him, I'm like, that makes a heck of a lot of sense. So yeah, that's where that, that came from, but he's completely right. It is better to pre prepare than repair. And what he's speaking about that is in regards to just financial planning. So mm -hmm. this is what this life, this lifeline really does is it just gets you ready for these transitions and goals. Now, some people might say, well, what's the difference between a transition and a goal? And like a transition is something that is basically happening. Like, it's going to happen, <laughs> whether mm -hmm. you like it or not. <laughs> a, goal, a goal is something that we want to happen. So they're not the exact same, but we want to make sure those are both on the lifeline because they are very important. And we don't want a transition to block a goal. So that's why it's really oh, okay. important to have all of those on there. All right. All right. Okay, Chris, you're talking about different areas where these transitions were going to happen. You talked about family, you talked about health. At work, is this an area of concern? Yeah, because, of course, a quick job loss, like you walk in, you're terminated, obviously that can't be on your lifeline because you didn't know. But a lot of clients are pretty receptive that I've sat down with and done this, and they're like, well you know what, things aren't going that well. Like let's, let's anticipate that maybe a year or two from now that I might need to be looking for another career or I've been let go because we're seeing upper management being let go. They're giving us more and more roles. We're not, we're not getting new projects. So sometimes they can give, they, like by having these discussions, which is actually the most important thing. Out of all of this, it's just to have these discussions because like I said, people aren't having them. I've never had someone say that they've done an exercise like this before. So mm -hmm. it is extremely important to do that. But yeah, in regards to work, that is definitely a big thing. And then with, there's so many different questions around that that we ask because of more people changing careers now. One, like they, especially people midlife, like in their forties and that I have multiple clients where they, they, they kind of are asking for your permission when, when we're meeting with them because they don't like what they're doing and they really do want to look at other possibilities, but they just get sucked into the hamster wheel where it's, well, young kids, mortgage, like I can't just now take a leap and not bring in money to pay the bills and everything else. So I guess I'm just going to sit here and stick around for the pension and it's only 20 more years of my life is sometimes what I've heard answers from, which I 100% yeah. disagree with. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about the 40s here. That would be a pretty active time in your life for a lot of these things to happen, I would think. Yeah. So that's obviously <laughs> talking from experience, me with my three kids and <laughs> everything that we have going on is there is a lot of transitions. And from 40 on, that's where you're going to really start having a whole bunch of these pop up because young kids, parenting, you're now in the mid point of your career where you need to make some some possible changes or figure out what you're going to do you have you have parents getting older that may now need some care and assistance there's it's there's a whole bunch yeah the parents are exactly what i was thinking about too as you say you've got your kids you've got your career what about aging parents yeah so that one comes up a lot actually this is reminds me of a story of one client as we were going through this and this tends to happen quite a bit and we're sitting there and the couple we're going through it and the wife is like, well, probably in two years that my mother's going to move in and dead silence. Husband turns <laughs> the, the slow roll with his head to over his right shoulder to look at her. Like, are you kidding me? Like we'd never even <laughs> chatted about this. Like I didn't, like I thought she'd go to a home. What do you mean? She's moving in. Whoa. And I was like, okay, no, it wasn't. A, it wasn't yeah. like <laughs> heated, but it was just like, I'm sitting there and like, this is why we do this because there has not been any discussion. Right. And his, then he came back, like humorous. He's like, "Okay, that's fine. She moves in, and I'm getting the new truck I want." <laughs> and then, then she goes, "Ah, oh, Chris, what icon is there for a new husband?" <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it was so, out in the open. You're right, and they're discussing it now. Yeah, and so many things like that. Like I remember one couple was they he wanted a cottage, and she kind of knew that, but he's like, "No, I want that on the lifeline. I want that four years from now," and she's like. Oh, like you're serious. And he's like, yes, I'm serious. I've been telling you this forever. She says, well, I didn't actually think you were really serious. So those are the types of discussions that come from this. And it, it just really helps when you, you start 
running couples through this. Actually, my first <laughs> my first example of this was my wife T and I, and we didn't even really know what we were doing back then. It wasn't called the financial lifeline. She actually got the idea from Oprah 15 years ago. She was watching the show and there was some book called The Secret. Mm-hmm. So there was she, she, she's like, well, we should kind of go through what we're going to do and all that stuff down the road in the future and all that. So we had a, this is before kids. So it was easy to find the time to do it. And here we are at the kitchen table and we're going through kind of what we think is going to happen in the next 15 years, just kind of mapping it out. Mm-hmm. So we start going this, and this is over 15, this is 15 years ago. So we start going through it and it was different than we started. I don't even know why it happened this way, but it was like we were cutting out pictures from magazines and stuff and gluing them on a personal board, Okay, which was a little bit different. But at the end of it, it actually was a financial lifeline. We were just kind of doing it a different way. And on that, we had things like family because we we both wanted kids. We wanted a dog. I knew at that point that I definitely wanted to have my own business. And then we got into some materialistic things because that's also fun too. And we were younger, so I might have put a snowmobile on there. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember Tina glued on a Princess Margaret ticket, which is in, it's, it's a lottery ticket. And okay. then I also wrote uh, in my own name, of course, not Tina's, but a million dollar check from myself to myself. <laughs> <laughs> right. And just to say that someday it'd be nice to be able to have that net worth that I can write that. Mm-hmm. And anyways, so we did all of that for whatever reason. I don't know why it went under our, under our bed. And I remember it got pulled out like maybe once or something like that. And that was it. And then it was like five or six years later. I don't even know why it was looking under there, but I pull it out and the thing's just covered in dust. So like, as I said, like there's, <laughs> we should have, we should have put a cleaning lady on there, but we, we didn't. So and that wasn't one of the goals. And it was obvious the amount of dust on it. And I pull it out. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, holy, actually everything here worked out, which is kind of weird because it, ideally with our financial life ones, every year we're reviewing them because it keeps clients accountable for the goals. And it's also too generating discussion. Hey, where we're at two, three years, you said this is happening. Mm-hmm. What steps have we taken? So we're reviewing this every year with clients. It's extremely important, but obviously back then we didn't really do that. And I'm looking at it and yeah, literally every single thing happened. Now you won the lottery. Well, kind of. It wasn't money. It was a blender. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so, I, I. But I. It still happened. It just. Yeah, it was. It a counts. I wish it counts. I wish it was something different. And I don't. I don't even know where that blender ever even went. But everything and even the snowmobile happened. The dog happened. The family happened. The business happened. And net worth. I happy to say like with with our home and and our, our net worth with the amount of debt we had at that time which wasn't a ton and everything we we could do the million dollar check thing too which was i was really proud of you should so be. yeah it was it was just weird how that happened but anyways that was my first example of doing this and then kind of had forgotten about it and then got back into doing this for clients in the last little bit so and it's been going really really well it's just it is very 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 important to do yeah um, and just obviously nobody does it. So that's why we're having the conversation about it because you have to plan for these because especially the transitions, they're going to happen whether you like them or not. It's best to make sure that we're prepared to to know and how to deal with that. All right. So you've got these plans, you've talked them through, you're looking at them year after year, you're trying to keep on track here. Can you mess it up? Can you mess it up with a bad decision? You can't mess it up with a bad decision because the, the thing is we're having the conversations about this. So we're we're putting everything down and opening up conversation and dialogue. And more, m- more importantly, we're discussing what steps are needed to deal with this. And it also trains the individual to also update us more frequently mm-hmm. when this stuff happens. But let's say, but let's say something really emotional happens and you, you you make a really rash decision. It's a tough moment. Can you, can you come back from this? Yeah, so like if you're making a quick financial rash decision can obviously throw off a financial plan. What the lifeline does is the whole point of that is we're trying to prepare for these things. So it avoids us reacting or overreacting to fire that has just started in regards to your finances mm-hmm. or transition. And it helps us help them give them a more proactive mindset about 
their future going forward in these transitions because well it's like anything like a life with stresses if you can kind of anticipate them and talk about them before they happen well you're much better to deal with that than just going in completely blind and having it end up on your lap right right uh for instance uh, let's talk about some more of these financial uh topics that you probably go through i'm sure you go through what am i saying um receiving an inheritance that could be a pretty a pretty difficult decision if it's a big inheritance do you and your your partner agree on what to do with it yeah the inheritance can be an issue it's just my experience of that is of course people like the fact that they're getting inheritance because obviously it's going to help them out in their their for their overall financial future but well, majority of them are well are not well equipped to be able to handle that because, like, how many times have you gotten that significant amount of money landed in your lap? And the thing with that is, depending on what they want to do with it, it can look big when it's a, a check right in front on your lap. But if they want to do things like, well, now I can slow down at work, or I can retire early, or something longer term like that, well, that big amount of money can get drained down pretty quick if there's not a plan put in place for that. And I should think there's also an emotional component here too. I mean, you might think, oh, I'm, I'm going to spend it to, since it was newfound money from so-and-so who loved us, we're going to spend it on the kids. Yeah. And I, you get a lot of that. Also too, you get a lot of mixed emotions in regards to when you have a wife and a husband, because they may have completely different ideas on what that money should be used for. Right. So it's just having those discussions. But when you know their overall financial picture, it helps because you can, you're there as a resource for them, a voice of financial wisdom to help them figure out all of this and show them what this looks like. Now, that sounds good. So what action, what is the first step they could take? Do you have tools that they can use? Yeah. So uh, on our website, what will be attached to this podcast is I have a life transition profile type tool. It's not the same thing that we use. Obviously, the thing that we use is much more in depth and a lot more options, more interactive. But for the listeners, if they just want to start to have this conversation with their significant other or even by themselves, you can just download this, print it off, and you can just go through the categories and check off okay, this is a high, medium, or low importance right now in my life. And when do I anticipate this may happen? And at least it gets the conversation going. So that is something that they can use to start kind of thinking along these ways. And do you kind of help them come together if they are so diverse in their thoughts? Do you, do you let them work it through? Do you give them just questions to help them think and prompt them? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty in-depth exercise we go through. So we take them each through this and then... We have icons and everything that we're, we're dragging and putting in the year that they think it's going to happen. But then my next questions are, okay, what is out of this? We've, done, we've gone from now till approximately death. What is the biggest pressing concern on this page in front of you right now? Mm-hmm. Is there one? Is there two? Because that is what we need to talk about today and address right now. And then they'll usually pick the one or two. And then from there, we start to dissect that and break that down. And I have questions on each individual category and Here's some things we need to start thinking about. And then that opens up the conversation as well. And then depending on how specific we get into it, then I have more information. I send them later after our meeting and then later follow up because it's it's all about trying to keep them accountable. And that's what the Financial Lifeline does because when you're reviewing this every year, we're just making sure that we're keeping them on track. And how great is that that you have something that's helping them look forward every year when they're sitting down going forward like hey i'm looking forward at my life everything is mapped out here well now you know what i thought that was a bit of a bigger concern three four years from now but now i don't even think that's going to happen that's not a problem we just simply take it off or move it but at least Mm -hmm. those discussions are have are happening where before they were not happening at all like the mother-in-law moving into the basement (laughs) (laughs) true enough true enough All right, Chris, tell me about your website. Where can they go? And what's the first step they need to to do to get some answers from you? So you can always go to our website. It's three hats, spelled T-H-R-E-E, not the number, three hats, financial.ca. And you can get the downloadable one you can do yourself. And then, of course, if you ever want us to run you through it, then you can contact our office as well. 
All right, great. Chris Duro of Three Hats Financial. Now, to subscribe to this podcast, all you have to do is use the subscribe button on this page. Also, don't forget to share it with colleagues and friends using the share button. That's also available. I'm Patrice Sikora, and let's talk again later. Thank you for listening to The Ride, Life, Work, and Wealth podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. All comments are of a general nature and should not be relied upon as individual advice. The views and opinions expressed in this commentary may not necessarily reflect those of IPC Investment Corporation. While every attempt is made to ensure accuracy, facts and figures are not guaranteed. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.